GE, unfortunately, is a disaster. It's the only way you can describe it, an absolute disaster. It's a monumental example of bad governance and horrible leadership. You look at virtually every major deal they did, Amersham, oil and gas, security, you go right down the list of things. Alstrom, an $18 billion blunder. It didn't take more than two and a half years for it to happen. You know, there's a great story in GE. You take the losses, combined losses of WorldCom and Enron together, and they don't add up to the losses in General Electric. Market cap. Yeah. Market cap. Yeah. But that's what the shareholders, that's out of their pocket. No, I know. Look, this, uh, by the way, that article in the journal on Saturday, it was the longest article I, I read, read it. in the newspaper. I thought it soft pedaled a lot of well, this. Well, it did, but more importantly, I, by the way, I asked a former GE director who was on the board after I, I understand something. We, we should point out to people who don't know, you were on the board. Of and the I was asked to leave the board right. by Jeff, so you your, have a right to be suspicious. Because of your potty mouth. I had a potty mouth. Still I, do. I, I was, I was Still a bad do. boy. Yeah. No, but I cleaned it up for this show. People give love me, bad boys. Give me credit, I have it under control. But, but well, wait till Andrew gets going. Here's what I said, what happened? And this former director said, too much cheerleading and not enough supervision. Zero supervision. One of the directors of General Electric, who was on the audit committee, said they never did a retrospective on any deal they made after they made it in all the years Inmelt was running. I think go, San go Sandy, Wa Sandy Warner Jeff. tried, right? And he got, he got thrown well, out, yeah, too, well, by, well, by okay. Inmelt. Don't yeah. forget, early on, Sandy was in Jeff's camp, OK? Yeah. And he flipped. But the point is, Look at the lack of governance. Where were the people in the room saying, hey, wait a minute, we bought this last deal three years ago. Don't you think we ought to work on that before we bite another deal? Mm -hmm. It was a series of deals. This is a tragedy. And you know what the tragedy is? Guys like me that sit in a room and make decisions, you have no idea the lives we impact of people who are betting on us doing the right thing, betting on us thinking of what's good for everybody. You realize the number of people that retired from GE that right. have seen most of their net worth wiped out because, because of they had GE. Yeah, they believed they in the GE company shares. so much they bought the stock, that payroll plan. This is a tragedy. This is a, and, and now Immelt's around writing books and, and talking about leadership through a crisis. And all. You, you, if you heard what he's writing, you'd say to yourself, hey, this guy did a great job. So, what, but when you think about the board, too many people on the board? That was the other thing I was going to say. 18 people on the board? Look, frankly, how I feel about a board, all you need is one person on the board that has the courage and the self-confidence to ask the tough questions. Okay, we bought Amersham, we put Castell on the board, now let's talk about what we got for that deal and why we didn't get what we thought we were going to get. Oil and gas, look at oil and gas. He went into oil and gas, look at the sale of NBC, getting out of financial services. You couldn't have picked a better bottom for the guy buying it. His, but the bigger thing to me is, where was it? And don't forget, go look at the grades that GE got from ISS and Glass Lewis about governance. They were a model of governance. So it's easy to kind of look back in hindsight and of say, of course it is. How, how do you do it when you are watching a company, when you're on the board, or if you're a shareholder sitting from the outside, kind of watching it as it goes down? What are the classic signs and symptoms? Well, the first thing is people, people that are sitting in a boardroom ought to be at risk. I think there shouldn't be any cash payments at all for five years. All your fees come in, because guess what? A lot of people sit on boards. They make more money on that board than they made in their full-time job. Right. They're not going to rock the boat. And they, they don't wait. have any stock, potentially. Well, that's a whole, and I'd yeah. say, all right, you want it. You sit here for five years, all your investment's going to be no cash up, but you're going to give your time, and then at the end of five years, we'll talk about cash fees. They have to be at risk. I know something right now. I don't want to sit on a board that I don't have a significant ownership interest in. I think better as an owner than I do as a part-time representative. I mean, for example. A hired consultant. A young, consultant. right, a young. I never, I always, Home Depot. Mm -hmm. So ownership matters. And I think it's a, what happened at General Electric is a tragedy and the whole story needs to be told, not for any purpose of punishment, but to learn, to learn what happened. Why did this happen? How could a company, the hot, most valuable company in the world 18 years ago, now be scurrying around for money for fear that it might go broke? 